it's bloody well snowing again and it's March and it should be springtime and Jesus was nailed to a cross as a constant reminder not to rebel against archaic laws and creeds in case you didn't know Jesus was nailed to a cross to remind us not to rebel against the Empire the Empire is uh, a men thing a man thing it's the men's club we call it the Empire we try to believe that it's not part of us but um, we all live in an empire one empire or the other the leading empire of course is the American Empire they don't like to call themselves the Empire but it is the Empire and we're gonna go right on back to Genesis chapter 3 to examine perhaps what may be an outline sketch of the beginning of the Empire Pyre, Empire not, not like umpire but Empire let's take a quick look at the the structure of an Empire the um, Pyramids are a very good example. The empire is obviously the very peak. Uh, that's where the leaders are. And they like to sell us the idea that they are the all-knowing and they are the hand of God and that kings and queens, mostly kings, queens don't really play too much of a role in their history. They are under the authority of God, the empirical, empirical, unquestionable, never change any rules law they are the gods and this is the way it's been since they took the s out of god it used to be that there were countless gods and we were running through the woods and the forest and we didn't have time for any of this empirical game bullshit and the um the, the story in genesis chapter 3 is perhaps one of the most significant and important chapters in the whole bloody Bible. So I'm not going to do a very good job of explaining it. I want you to get a couple of ideas and then go and look at it yourself because there's no sense believing me because that is the opposite of what I'm trying to get you to do. I want you to learn how to think. And we'll start Genesis with um, verse 1. Now the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild beasts the Lord God had made. Well, the Lord God did not make the serpent and the serpent here is supposed to be a snake at least in most people's minds it's a snake but the, the snake is a symbol it is a symbol that has been taking, taken from cultures that were before the empirical cultures which probably were also a little bit empirical but the, the idea of the serpent was rebirth and this is very very significant when we get on to verse 4 not to forget that this concept of rebirth was not idiotic or insane up until the empire took over it was very common be belief or acceptance or maybe even knowledge if you can go that far that we knew that we didn't die and verse 4 I mean of course your body dies and when you're born again you probably won't remember nothing but the ego, the ego is out of proportion. I mean, the I of you, the I of me, isn't as relevant as the what of of what we do. So, try not to think too much of yourself is whatever your name is. Use a different name for a while, and try not to be you. And you will see that part of you is eternal. Okay, verse four. The serpent said to the woman, "You are not going to die." Okay, that is very clear text. You are not going to die from becoming wise. The whole idea was the tree of knowledge to become knowledgeable. And this has been made a sin by the empire. In the very third ch uh, chapter of the book that goes on for so many chapters, you wouldn't be able to count them unless you took a lot of time. It's all right there. You're not going to die. And the empire has told you, yes, you are going to die. And that if you start becoming smart, like the overlords, then we're going to have a lot of trouble. 